Spinoza talks about five remedies for the effects. The first one is knowledge of the effects itself. The first thing you can do is simply be aware of the emotion in question according to Spinoza. I'm going to break that down into two aspects. The first is bringing the emotion into focus, making it and not the mental images that accompanied the object of your awareness. And the second is understanding that particular emotion and how it functions. In our default mode of being, we directly engage with what we perceive as the world and the emotions are there in the background kind of amorphously conditioning how we interact with it. So the first thing is simply stopping and noticing, okay, I'm angry or I'm sad or I'm jealous. This is a major shift in your mind. You've actually changed your relation towards the world when you do this. It is as if your emotion were someone standing behind your back, pressing on your shoulders and hips driving you to this way or that and now you've sidestepped it and it has stumbled in front of you it's still there but now you're in a much less vulnerable position you actually have agency over it now it is as through it is it is through this move that the mind is able to assert its power it gives you a range of motion towards events and it is your capacity to do this which determines your degree of freedom the second remedy for the effects Spinoza says is separating the effect from the thought of an external cause. Spinoza says that all emotions can be broken down to love or hate, that is, joy or pain accompanied by the idea of an external cause. The way you liberate yourself from negative emotions is by cutting that link. We live with this assumption, this basic assumption that the thing we're experiencing, the colors, the shapes, the textures, the sounds, in other words, the images, is the thing or things itself. But Spinoza says, says that in our mind, there is an image, which is the color or the shape, the texture or the sound, and there is joy or sadness, pleasure or pain, and there is the idea of an external cause, or the notion that the thing you're experiencing is outside you. And the key point is that that third thing isn't necessary. Your mind can get rid of it. Your mind can get rid of the idea of an external cause. And when it does, the second bit, the sadness or pain or excessive joy can disappear too leaving just the first thing, the sense experience, which is now neutral. And because there is no longer a strong emotional engagement with it, the first thing can soon disappear as well. The third thing that Spinoza talks about is cultivating understanding. He says, In the time by which the affections related to things we understand surpass those related to things we conceive confusedly or in a mutilated way. The objects of our imagination only affect us while we regard them to be present. If we stop experiencing them, they stop affecting us emotionally. However, things that we understand rationally in the abstract, we always regard as present. And thus, over time, they will win out. So long as we diligently pursue the two previous strategies, more and more of our mind will be taken up with rational understanding, which will affect you with constant intellectual pleasure. For example, think of what happens with doctors and nurses if they don't burn out. Seeing someone die would be extremely traumatic for us because we have a view of the world mostly drawn from the things we see. And we don't usually see people around us turning strange colors or bloating and going rigid. But doctors and nurses have spent a lot of time studying anatomy and biology and stuff. So once they get used to dealing with the images of people dying, what's left is, oh, okay, patient three is dead. Let me see the readout. Well, of course they died. Their liver was punctured. So that's what happens. See, over time, their immediate reactions to particular things fade away. But their rational understanding of the world is constantly confirmed and maintained and built on. So over time, their emotions align with their rational worldview. This isn't really something you do actively. It's more a general observation of the trend of the rational life. But if you want to help it along as you go through your life, just keep an eye open and try to ask yourself what the underlying dynamics of the things you experience are. Over time, that means you'll be less emotionally reactive when unpleasant things happen that align with that dynamic, which you are now led to expect. The fourth thing that Spinoza says, um, which he says is a remedy to the effects, is relating and connecting images of things to common properties or God. So way back in part two, I mentioned that we are more emotionally affected by something we imagine to be free. That is, we hate a person for hating us more than we hate a pine cone for falling on us, for example. To imagine something to be free is to imagine it without bringing to mind its causes. So, to diminish the discomfort we feel when something happens, we relate it to common properties. 
that is to say we think of it in terms we know to be true in general of things of its kind that is to say we bring to mind its causes if we know the specifics then great but if we do not it doesn't really matter we know that in common with all other natural events it must have its reasons for happening now spin there's this there's very funny example that spinoza gives he's a very weird guy that is the least thing to say about he says the more this knowledge that things are necessary is concerned with singular things which we imagine more distinctly and vividly the greater is this power of the mind over the effects as experience itself also testifies for we see that sadness over some good which has perished is lessened as soon as the man who has lost it realizes that this good could not in any way who have been kept similarly we see that no one pities infants because of their inability to speak to walk or to reason or because they live so many years unconscious of themselves but if most people were born grown up and only one or two were born infants then everyone would pity the infants because they would regard infancy itself not as a natural and necessary thing but as a vice of nature or a sin we could point out many other things along this line what a funny example to choose but what is essentially saying is that we cannot basically we accept what we cannot change and thereby diminish sadness and perhaps at a stretch feel some intellectual pleasure at understanding it the last thing the fifth thing he says is that the order by which the mind can order its effects and connect them to one another is a remedy to the effects or for the effects for example you leave a part of each day free where you don't act in the world or take in any information just have a cup of tea sit in the garden quiet time basically and then you allow yourself you allow anything that's bothering you to bubble up your past experiences will have left you with a certain collection of images accompanied by emotional reactions left alone these will color your view of the world and condition your reactions so you let them come to your awareness you take the images memories and fantasies and you calm the negative emotions which accompany them and then you re-narrativeize them anything you see in your head that isn't currently happening is an imprint which has been left in your brain you can if you are able to muster the mental resources rewrite it of course and having rewritten it into a new narrative when similar things happen in the future you will be more likely to interpret them and in this way when they're happening and thus feel less pain and act better but here's the thing doing this afresh with every negative thought you have is inefficient and here's where spinoza again shows his highly practical side reason allows us to understand how the imagination works and discern our own interests combined this means that we can twist it to our advantage so you successfully talk yourself out of a few head spaces for example then you notice the basic logic you employed and then you distill that into a phrase or visual image a maxim or mantra if you will in other words you hijack the power of associations from that point on that phrase will serve to recalibrate you when you encounter a similar situation for example someone you have pleasant sorry unpleasant associations with comes to mind when you have a calm clear moment you take this person's image and you place them in the center of a flower and then you have the flower fold back in on itself and sink back into the ground from then on there's a new association established whenever you think of the person you'll be less likely to ruminate you'll think of a flower instead see the little flower folding of animation and be able to move on so essentially these are the five remedies for the effects that spinoza presents alternatively you can rely on external objects you can go for a walk and look at some trees or do some exercise or something or even better you can rely on a friend that is an external body which can reliably help you with negative effects